Hey, it's Mark Fidolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on today's roundtable podcast, we've got Aaron Bearland Williams. Bearland Williams, how are you? Bearland Aaron. Hey, I'm doing great. It's great to be back. We've got the always unflappable Eric no nickname Peterson. Eric, how are things? I'm doing good. Every time I watch American Idol with my kids, I think of you because like there's always that person from Tennessee or Nashville and they're talking about like Elvis. I'm like, I wonder if Eric knows those people. I swear everybody is a musician here. So, you know, and, and they're all super talented. So it's, it's crazy. As Mike Zana would say, play the guitar. Yeah. I'm not one of those super talented I'm sure you are. You're probably just being no. modest. No. And then, of course, there's the better get it done. Tate, the big Papa Litchfield. Tate, how are you? Happy to be here. Happy to be here. Are you happy with your one-on-one coaching clients? Yeah. I mean, I just uh, got off the phone with a couple of them, and they're, you know, doing, I think there's 6000 a month in passive. So hard to be uh, – you know, how to be hard to beat that. I mean, that's pretty awesome for five, six months in. They're executing. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just it. They're, they're not afraid to do what it takes to move the needle. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of execution in real time, that leads us to our Sherpa of flight school, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And of course, you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com. Forward slash Langy. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I am psyched for next week because this week, this week, this week, yeah. So if you're listening to this, it'll be this week boot camp, the Vegas boot camp, or as Jeff Detmer likes to refer to it as TinkCon. So we were kind of talking before the podcast. Um, how do you prepare for boot camp and what should our attendees expect? So, Bearland Aaron, what are your thoughts? Preparation for boot camp uh, is, you know, just bring yourself and a huge willingness to learn and an open mind to absorb all these things um, that you will be learning. And then uh, expectations, um, you know, expect to meet some great people that you'll form relationships in this business with um, for a long, long time. And um, you'll sit in class and you will learn a lot of things that are going to make what was in the toolkit make a whole lot of sense, you know, filling in those gaps. We've talked about that a lot. Um, But it's going to be a whole lot of knowledge and you're going to kind of sit there with your jaw dropped um, so take, take good notes and that sort of thing. Um, and just enjoy the experience thoroughly because it's a thoroughly enjoyable experience. Awesome. Awesome. Eric Peterson, what are your thoughts? How to prepare, what to expect? Yeah. First thing I would say is, uh, make sure you come fully rested. Um, boot camp is intense. Um, you know, it goes from, first thing in the morning till, you know, five, six at night. Um, and you're going to be exhausted from, from learning all that information and taking it in and, um, keeping up with everything. So, um, it's, it's very fast paced and, you know, I want you to come prepared, I guess. Um, secondly, take advantage of your time there, um, to get to know the other land investors that are there. Um, they are the community that, that we interact with on a regular basis. Um, so if you get the chance to, to put a, you know, the physical person to the, the face you see maybe in the Facebook group or what have you, um, you know, take full advantage of that and, and get to know those people because ultimately um, in the future, you'll be able to reach out to them, talk to them, ask them questions, you know, work together on deals, different things like that. So. All right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Big Papa. 
Yeah, I would kind of second what Eric had to say about come and rest it. I mean, it is Vegas. Don't let Vegas get the best of you. You guys come rested, be in class on time every single day. We start on time. We don't wait, you know, and there's just so much content. We've got bonus sessions. It is intense, but yeah, meet people, network, and just genuinely come and get those batteries recharged because uh, this business can be a little lonesome. And so it's good to come to boot camp every couple months and, and have a weekend where you meet other people who are as obsessed as you are with buying land in the middle of nowhere. Right. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a nice way to recharge and, and get motivated for the upcoming, you know, quarter or next 12 week year. So I love it. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Scott Todd, how about you? Uh, I, don't, don't, don't go out and party, right? Like do, do yourself a favor. Like don't, like Tate said, don't, don't go out and, and like, uh, you know, go crazy. It is Vegas after all. And, uh, you know, I think that, I think that boot camp is always a place. I always felt like boot camp was a place that would re-energize me, but also allow me to, to kind of refocus on my business. You know, Mark, one of the, one of the things that I, I really, uh, one of the people I admire a lot in this business is Mimi Schmidt and Mimi would come to boot camp, and literally it was her, uh, retreat to, you know, retreat time to work on her business. And so, I would just say, you know, just just come here, have an open mind. If this is your first boot camp, have an open mind. <clears throat> There's a lot to learn, and it can literally transform your life. It did for me. Yeah, I think I think my advice, you know, based on because we do surveys at the end, and it is they are long days, right? And some people physically um, and mentally, especially like afternoon, um, start getting tired. And if you can have snacks, because we do have snacks in the morning, but then afternoon after lunch, we don't have snacks. And um, I don't think we have coffee either. So be prepared, you know, for that as well. Um, and, and just kind of monitor yourself physically because it is a very long, very uh, intense days. Something else I would say is don't be shy um, with the coaches, right? Like when you meet Eric Peterson for the first time or Bearland Aaron or Tate, um, especially Scott, you might be a little starstruck, right? And you might think, Oh, wouldn't it be great if they would come to me and just introduce themselves and, and start talking to me. Sometimes they will. Sometimes, you know, they're tired. It's a long day for them as well. And I would say be proactive especially during say a break or lunch or the uh, certainly during, you know, on Friday night during the, um, the networking uh, session as well. Um, go to them and just introduce yourself and, you know, just let them know, Hey, I listen to the podcast. I think you're great. You're not as great as Mark, obviously, but you're still great. And um, I was just kidding there, but yeah, but you know, but, but don't be shy and, and, and I think the expectation is, oh, wouldn't it be nice if the coaches sort of made the rounds and answered questions and introduced themselves? These guys are tired. They're tired. It's, you know, I know for Tate and Scott and I, we're up at like five and we're having breakfast. We're, we're discussing the day and we're, we're going up until about nine at night. So Friday is sort of like the best day to talk to the coaches Saturday, we are completely fried. And, um, but, you know, you're, especially, you're, yeah. you're making everybody say, like, don't, I can't no. talk to the coaches on Saturday. No, you can talk, talk to them, but <laughs> don't expect them to be proactive. It's hard. It really is hard. It is hard. We're, so we're nice guys. That's what Mark's getting at. We're nice they're guys. They're really nice guys, but we don't fight that hard, right? I mean, come say hello to us. We want to get to know you. We're thankful that you came to boot camp. And, if you ever have questions, we're here to help. Yeah, and we, and we create an environment where the networking of our community is so positive. Everybody's willing to share, and it's really something special. So even if you're kind of shy, um, don't worry about it because you're, you'll still be able to network, um, and it's, it's going to be tremendous. You're going to make lifelong friendships and connections at boot camp, and uh, 
it's really exciting to see, especially, you know, from the beginning and Friday all the way to Sunday, how that room forms is, is really kind of magical when it, when it all kind of comes together. And um, as I like to say, all the land investing clouds in your head are going to dissipate and everything by Sunday will be completely clear. So um, I love boot camp. Scott, are you, are you still loving boot camp or are you like, oh man, another boot camp? Mark, I do love boot camp. Um, the the challenge that I have is that um, believe it or not, and my my wife would tell you that she doesn't believe it, but I am an introvert, right? Like, and so uh, you know, like I don't mind public speaking. I get I really get energized from it. I don't mind like teaching. I get energized from it, but it's hard for me to. Uh, to, it, it's it's draining at the same time, right? And so it's it's really it's really funny because I like boot camp, I enjoy it, I like interacting with everybody, and then at the same time, at the end of the day, I just want to curl up in my room and like hide so I can <laughs> re-energize for the day, for the next day. Yeah, I know it's so funny. I feel the same way, and uh, it, that's why I love putting Eric Peterson on the spot so much at boot camp because I know like. He's uncomfortable speaking publicly. And then when he does it, it's great. And like, it gives us all kind of a break. And Eric, you, are you over kind of that whole, that whole thing about public speaking? No, I don't know that I'm over it, but you know, it, it gets easier all the time, I guess. Um, yeah, it's, it's just not in my personality to, to kind of stand in front of a group and, and talk. Um, but um, it's always easier when you feel like you know the, the subject matter well um that always makes things go a little smoother yeah i'm excited for bearland aaron to get into that vip room and really uh grill scott and tate or vice versa actually i know what goes on in that vip room there will be tears <laughs> aaron, aaron's gonna be like man this is this is like this is vip room i mean he's been too elite mark yeah, he won't be so impressive with VIP. Yeah. But it'll still be, it'll be a nice refresher. He's hard to, you know, Bearland is hard to kind of like please, I guess, is what I'm going to say. Oh, why would you say that? He I might mean, be more, pleaser. Like a, you know, he might be like another coach in there helping the others. Yeah. Like, a, you know, a grizzled vet, put his arm around somebody, say, look, it's okay. When I was, when I was starting out, I was just like you you know, bright eyed and bushy tailed. I'll make owl. sure that I bring the kinder, gentler bear. The big, exactly. I'll, but, I'll be the teddy bear. How's that? <laughs> is, that is the whole family going to be there? <laughs> no, the, I'm batching it this time. Oh, good time. Just be. Yeah. Very, very fun. So is there any other final advice for uh, the community to kind of prepare and what to expect for boot camp? No? All right. Well, let's move on to uh, Scott Todd. He had a very interesting story that we can all learn from. Scott? Oh, man. <laughs> so I had this cheap little property, and it was uh, we sold it for, like, I think it was like $1,200, right, right at $1,200. And we, we accepted payment on a credit card. And uh, we transferred the deed probably about a month later. I get an email that says, hey, this guy has disputed this charge, said it was fraudulent. And I'm like, what? I break out the mini bat. I call the guy and I'm like, hey, dude, uh, you, you bought a property from me, right? He's like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, the credit card company said that it was fraud. So like, we got a problem. And he's like, well, I didn't report as fraud. And I'm like, okay, well, then that means that the credit card that you used, someone else reported as fraud if you didn't do it. Somebody reported this thing as fraud. And we've got to get to the bottom of it because we're going to have a problem. He's like, well, I don't have a problem because I haven't disputed it as fraud. And I'm like, okay, listen, so here's the way it's going to work. Um, do, do you have this credit card? Is it in your possession? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, I need to see it. He's like, I'm not going to give it to you. I said, okay, listen, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to call the police. And the reason I'm going to call the police is because you bought a piece of property and 
you report this transaction as fraud, even though you signed all the paperwork and everything. So there's some element of fraud going on here. And I will have to report that to the, to your local police. And he's like, uh, I'm like, and then I'm going to file a notice in the County records that says that this deed in particular is being questioned because of, of this, it's going to be a, an affidavit and a notary. It's going to, um, kind of a memo. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cloud the title on this thing until we get this thing all sorted out. I'm like, that's a lot of work. And I don't really understand what happened. He's like, well, I didn't do that. And you know, you can call the police if you want. And, and I'll just, I'll just give you back the property. I'm like, look, I don't really want to do this. Like, I don't want to call the police. I want you to have the property, but it, someone has reported this thing as fraud. So either, either you did it or the, the rightful card holder did. And there's actually fraud going on here. And he's like, no, 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 no. Let me talk to my wife. I'll get back to you. So about 25 minutes later, the guy calls me. He's like, okay, I got to the bottom of it. My wife didn't recognize the name of the company. And she disputed it. She already, she already told the credit card company to, to waive the dispute. And I'm like, okay, well, I, I need to talk to them. So let's get them on the phone. So we get them on the phone. He actually connected me to, to American Express. American Express basically said, okay, we've removed the dispute. We have, we have uh, told the credit card processor to reissue the funds. It will take place in about five days. And they did it, right? But we had to get a little aggressive because obviously it was reported as fraud. I mean, I hated to be breaking out the mini bat and going after the guy. But that said, that's one of the cool things about this business is even though, you know, you do have, it's first time, 600 transactions, first time I ever had this happen. It's still great because essentially, I mean, I had the law on my side at this point because the guy signed the contract. I could have also forwarded a copy of the contract and everything to my credit card processor, all would have been good, but we were able to resolve it very quickly, especially with the law getting involved. Uh, yeah, that's a great story. Uh, there's a lot to uh, take away from that. Bearline Aaron, what's your takeaway? I don't know. I hope, I hope I don't have to deal with something like that. Um, Has anyone ever tried to commit any type of fraud on with you? On, on with any us? Yeah. Um, no, not so much. You know, I've had people flake out and that sort of thing, but no one, no one's been like willfully fraudulent. All right. How about you, uh, Eric? Well, I think the the biggest takeaway for me there is just that, um, you know, to, to take a credit card payment um, for a property as a whole, I mean, it is a little bit concerning uh, from the standpoint of someone could dispute that charge, but knowing that um, ultimately you've got a purchase agreement if you did that, and you've also got um, the recorded deeds so showing that the transaction happened. So um, you really have everything you need to be able to prove that, you know, those funds were deserved and they weren't fraudulent and, and all that kind of stuff. So I think um, that's, you know, some important pieces to keep in mind there if you're selling kind of lower dollar properties on a one-time credit card payment. Yeah. I mean, Ted, has this ever happened to you? Do you have any experience with this? You know, no, I, I've never had any issues with this, but uh, it's really interesting to see how Scott handled it. I love the fact that he said to the guy, well, you're going to need to get uh, American Express on the phone while I'm here. Let's, uh, let's do a three-way call. And I loved it. Uh, that's, that's a genius right there. So I've never had this problem. Um, I think it goes to show you two things. Number one, it, the majority of our buyers are good people, right? If you think about the collective here on this group, thousands and thousands of deals have been done. And, you know, maybe I think Mark, you've had one instance of fraud, but I've had, I've had one instance of fraud and I learned the hard way um, how to handle that because, you know, really she sounded very nice. She said, Hey, I went out to the property. Um, I didn't love it. Can you refund me? Oh, by the way, I changed credit cards. Can you just send me a check? Right. It turns out she had a stolen credit card and just took the money there. So from now on, I only, when I do a refund, um, it's got to go back on that original card. So I learned that really, really early on. And then um, I did have one lady embezzle funds um, in Nevada. She is like a famous story. 
but she stole, I want to say $7 million and spent like 50 grand with, uh, with us. And in raw land, we kept that money. She did go to jail, but, um, I, you know, I just remember getting sort of a notice from the County, but (laughs) that they were going to, you know, be taking back the property from her, but we, we kept out those funds. It was, it was really interesting, but other than that, in all this time, you know, since 2001, only kind of, you know, one instance of fraud. So it's yeah. really, really rare. I mean, it goes to show you that, you know, it's, there's most of the people who are buying our properties are pretty good people. And uh, we don't have to deal with a lot of the issues that other, you know, businesses might when it comes to fraud and those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's really interesting. Um, and then, you know, there, there's very few th- transactions that really make you go, uh, I think for Scott, this was like one of them, right? It's like, oh, this is a headache. Yeah. Um, I mean, th- this one, this one kind of gives you, g- gave me the reason to like, oh, come on. But Mark, I was, <laughs> I mean, this is going to sound crazy. I was only into this property for uh, less than $200. Okay. So my yeah, worst I, case scenario was I lost $200. Like, I don't like losing money at all, but that literally it's like, uh, okay. All right. How much, I mean, part of you even thinks like, do you even want to dispute, <laughs> dispute it? You know, like, is, isn't my time worth more than the 200 I invested? No, it's not. It, you know, that, <laughs> and that's the funny thing. It's like, you know, at the time was he'd lost money on that deal. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that really puts things in perspective. So if, let's say, you know, you're listening to this and you're a house, you know, landlord, right? You've got so many different UG phone calls, right? The, the plumbing, right, is out. Uh, the roof needs repair. Um, you know, people steal the appliances when they, when they move out. I mean, there's so many different nightmare stories when you actually own a physical asset as opposed to raw land. Like, oh, gee. We had somebody, you know, try to commit fraud on a credit card that they were going to lose. Um, I mean, wah. For, wah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the only other headache we have is someone stops paying on their note and then we just expand our ROI more on that note and resell it and get another down payment and another note person. Um, I, I think this is the most headache free way of investing in real estate. Is, is there anything? that's even comes close. I don't think I don't, so. I don't think so. I don't know. But, you know, I, th- I saw like we had a down payment for a thousand dollars today and the guy just immediately emailed and said, Hey, I want a refund. Um, I had, you know, some kind of financial issue. We're like, okay. Like, all right. Like that was like, you know, a little like, Oh, that's disappointing. We'll resell it again for another thousand dollars down. Like, okay. No problem. Like better to know, you know, that day than, 60 days later or something. So kind of a, you know, it's, it's all mindset. It's all perspective. So I know that Eric's got to run and uh, that leads us to the tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the auto passive income listeners to go right now and prove their businesses and prove their lives. Eric, what do you got? So I have today listly.io l-i-s-t-l-y dot io i'll put it in the chat here for you guys um basically it's a chrome pr- plugin and it allows you to take a web page and turn it into an excel document so you know it's going to take all the data and and uh you know grab links grab tables whatever and, and put it in an excel sheet so um you know, um, you could definitely use it on a county website to pull content to to work with your mailing list or, um, you know, a number of other uses like that um, on top of just, you know, scraping website content from somewhere you want to grab some information from. So I um, thought it was kind of handy. Wow. The price is really good. 10 pages are free. 200 pages is two bucks a month. A thousand pages is ten dollars a month. This might be the most affordable web scraper I've seen. Holy mother! Where'd you find this? <laughs> That's the secret of of having the tip of the week, right? You just you know where to find this stuff. Talk to Scott about that. 
I'm going to be grilling you uh, this weekend at boot camp. This is a great tip. Finally, <laughs> finally, from the, the evolution from John Not Pro all the way to Listly.io. Congratulations, Eric. <laughs> you. you have a new nickname. Every now and then I get an okay one. So it'll Eric, only last a couple weeks and then we'll go back to nothing, but it's all right. <laughs> tip, tip master. <laughs> I mean, cool. this is great. Eric Listley Peterson. <laughs> Eric Listley Peterson. Scott Todd, look at this. I've seen a lot of web scrapers. Have you seen anything better? No, I'm I'm downloading right now, <laughs> Me too. right now, and I'm trying to figure out how I can uh, have this this piece deleted from this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is good relevant material. You really? I mean, this is so you, bad. Eric needs to like get rid of it right now. Can you think about all we'll that? And I need to give a new tip for today. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's redo this. Edit. Take one. <laughs> I mean, this would be a great way to build your list on these web-based websites on from the county, right? Yeah, just this great. is cool. This is phenomenal. Wow. All right, Philip Ma. There you go. I hope you're listening to that. That's your, that's your one tip um, for the week. So I want to thank all the listeners. I just want to remind everybody, hopefully everyone's getting a lot of value from the Roundtable podcasts. Please do us a small favor. Please do us the three little things. You got to subscribe, you got to rate, and you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We are going to send you for free our passive income launch kit course, which is regularly $97. And also today's podcast is sponsored by a new book that's coming out. Dirt Rich. Just email support at thelandgeek.com and get on the list to uh, to get on to get the Dirt Rich the special introductory price, which uh, is yet to be announced, but I promise you you're gonna love it. So um, please do that. Guys, are we good? We're good, Mark. All right. Well, thanks, guys. And uh, I want to thank everybody. We'll see you all in Vegas for TateCon or boot camp, whichever. Um, if you are listening to this and you are coming to boot camp, the secret phrase to win a special raffle ticket, which provides lots of gifts worth I think the last gift we gave out was worth $1.25 million to get that extra ticket. The secret phrase will be listly.io, listly.io. All right. I want to thank everybody and uh, let's have a great boot camp. See everybody next week. Oh, Tate, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, are we going to send it off? Oh, yeah. yeah. Ring. Yeah. One, two, three. Let it. Freedom ring. ring. Oh my god. Aaron's always dragging the, the, the bus on this one. Man. I was right with you, you guys. No, you were not. It's his internet. It's his internet. It's gotta Look, be he's latent. got red bars all over his dang internet. He can't even I, I mean, like this is what happens when you live out in the wilderness. You know what happened? The the kids just got home and the Wi-Fi went. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mark, he, he's living let me tell you where he's living. He's living in <laughs> Walking dead land, I think. Like he's living in the zombie land. I mean, you know, what a great way to unplug. I'm surprised they have internet. Well, maybe. <laughs> I mean, you know, Bearland Aaron is just very zen, focused, present because there's literally nothing else to distract him in life. That's almost <laughs> true. I mean, there's well, a highway he, out front, but But why does he lash out on this call? Today he didn't, but normally he does. I, you know, I don't know. I think, I think just he gets excited about being around other people. And oh, then, oh, you know. oh, he's like the playful dog. He can't, he can't yeah. handle it. He's like, <laughs> hey, I got other people. I get to talk to somebody. Holy crap. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm, 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 I'm a golden retriever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he, we're going to have a great, we're going to have a great weekend, man. I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, to hang out with you in Vegas as all of you. And then um, Eric, I was really stressed out about the end of this call because I know you have to jump. So, sorry if I forgot about Let Freedom Ring. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, 
see you uh, in a little bit. All right. Peace out. Ciao. Yeah.